This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Vitz, and we're going to be doing a couple things in today's video. First, we're going to be putting our persistent audio manager to a little bit more practical use by using it to dynamically change what sound, what background music is being played, whether we're in game or just in the menus. Secondly, we're going to be taking our audio mixer and using that to kind of smoothly transition between songs rather than, you know, kind of choppily cutting between them. So, um, you'll notice here I have added a second uh, background music track. This is going to be for inside of our games. I just got this from Incompetech again. Highly recommend them for when you're prototyping or even in the alpha level of your games, just to kind of get something in there so that you can hear it and have a little bit more of a complete game experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our persistent audio player script to start. And what we need to do is we need to first set up a connection to our audio mixer as well as um, a place to store these clips. So we're going to go up into our namespaces and we're going to add using Unity Engine dot audio. And then down here, we're going to create two new public, we're going to do a public audio mixer. We're just going to call that mixer. And secondly, we're going to have a public audio clip. We're going to make this an audio clip array called Music Tracks. Now, in order to actually change this, we're going to want to create a method that will take and look at what we're currently playing and make sure that we're changing to something different and not just changing back to the same track again. We don't want to you know, go from, say, our main menu scene to the level select scene stop the menu music and then restart it, we can just keep that going smoothly as our persistent audio player can actually do for us. So what I'll do here is I'm going to say public void change music. And we're going to pass this in an integer called our track, basically the index from our array up here. We could, if we wanted to be even more clear, either create an enum or some kind of a dictionary so that we could actually call clips based on their names, but for now we just, we're just going to have the two so we can do this with zero and one and we should be able to keep track of things. So we're going to say here if music tracks at the in index of track is equal to our player's clip, oops, double equal sign, then we don't actually need to do anything here. We can simply say return. However, if it is a different track, we can in fact change it. We'll simply, we'll put it here, player.clip equals music tracks track. And then we do need to actually specify that it will play as well. If you change the clip in the audio player, it will stop playing and it won't automatically start for you. So make sure that you include that. So with that, we can actually go over to our play session manager. And here is where we're actually going to tell the audio player to change or not. And we're going to do this right down here. What this line of code is doing for us is basically saying if we're in the game, set up the level. And we're going to use that same logic to say if we're in the game, play the game music. Otherwise, play the menu music. So we'll say player or persistent audio player dot ins. We need to get the particular instance of it. Change music. And in this case, we're going to want to go to the music, which is going to be our second uh, track. So we're going to put that as integer one, index one. And then we need to add an else here, because if we go to something that's not the game, then we want to go to our menu, menu music. And so we'll copy this, paste it in here, but we'll just change this to zero. So now we can actually set this up in the inspector. So back in our persistent audio player, we now have a couple of properties down here. We've got a space for our mixer, which we're not using yet, but we're about to. And then we have a space for music tracks. So for our mixer, I'm simply going to drag the whole mixer that we've got right into there. So we've got that and we're uh, not going to forget to put that in later. And now for music tracks, remember our zero um, index is going to be the menu music that we've already had. So I'm going to drop that in. And then our uh, index number one will be the in-game music. I'm just going to need to apply this because this is a prefab that we put into every scene, so I'll apply that to the prefab and therefore to all of the 
background music player so that no matter where we start, we're still getting the functionality we want. And we can hit play, and what we should hear is we get our menu music. Now, if we go to start game, what happens? We quickly, we cut, and we go to our game music. A little bit different, a little bit more chill. And then when we finish the level set, we go back to menu music. And this repeats, so we can also just exit out. Same effect happens. Every time we change the scene, it checks to see should the music change, and if it should, it will do that for us. However, it's a very sharp change right now. It's just, you know, cutting right to the new music. Um, this might be something you're looking for, but chances are you probably want something that's a little bit smoother of a transition. And fortunately, we can do that relatively easily thanks to our audio mixer. Uh, you'll recall that our audio mixer gives us these groups that we can put in, um, whether it's the music or sound effects, things like that. But what it also lets us use are these snapshots. And what snapshots are basically saying, I'm going to set the levels to a certain amount and then kind of save that as this sort of uh, setting that is what we call a snapshot. And then you can switch between them and you can do that and transition over time so you get this kind of uh, very smooth transition from one set of volumes to another. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this first snapshot which is the default which is just everything at full and I'm actually going to rename this and you can do this a couple ways. You can either just give it a couple um, slow double click or you can right click and say rename. And I'm going to call this one um, full audio. And then I'm going to add a second snapshot. And this one, um, you'll notice when you hit the plus sign, it will quickly can kind of name it as a copy. I'm going to call this one Mute BGM, because this is what we're going to do is we're going to fade out our background music and then bring it back up um, when we change the track. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take and make sure you've got the Mute BGM highlighted, because it's it, these depend on which snapshot is chosen. If I did this one and move this around, now you'll notice that it's the full audio that got changed. I'll bring that back to zero. So in mute BGM, I want to bring that all the way down to negative 80, which is like silent. Now what we can do with these snapshots in place is that we need to tell our audio player that we want to transition when we change tracks. And to do that, we need to do a little bit of legwork in our uh, play session, or sorry, in our persistent audio player. Because the way that, I can actually show you here, the way that um, the audio mixer API calls the change from snapshots is a little bit, um, let's just say convoluted. What happens is we'll say, uh, we've got our mixer up there, so we'll say mixer dot uh, transition to snapshots. And this takes three variable, or three parameters, I should say. Um, but two of them, as you'll notice here, are arrays. And the reason for this is that if you have a lot of different snapshots, what you can do is you can simply pass in this whole array of all your snapshots, and then pass in which ones you want to be weighted the most, and then the time to reach it. Um, unfortunately, when you're only dealing with like one or two snapshots, this is kind of a clunky thing to deal with. But it definitely becomes more useful as you have more settings that you're dealing with. But for now, what we need to do is we need to create a couple, or, uh, a couple of arrays here, as well as setting kind of an index of our, flo of our uh, float weights. And so what we'll do here is we're gonna, I'm gonna delete this for, or I'll comment it out for a second so it's not confusing the compiler. And we're gonna go up here and we're gonna say public uh, snatch, audio mixer snapshot array. And I'm gonna call one full audio and the other mute BGM. And those are going to pertain directly to what we have for audio BGM. Um, I'm not actually going to create a float array because we can do that when we just call the parameter, for right now at least. Um, like I say, if eventually when you have a lot of these, then you're going to do this where you're just going to have one array with all of your snapshots in it and you're going to use that. Right now we're doing this in a little bit of a different way. I am also going to create a quick public float here for our transition time. So I'm going to kind of default set to about half a second. Uh, we can certainly adjust that as we want to, but that just will give us some consistency, especially because we're going to need to kind of set a delay on what we do within our changing music here. So down here, what we want to do now is we can say transition to snapshots. And what we're going to do is we're going to 
first we want to mute the background music so that when we change when we stop the track it doesn't like abruptly cut off and it doesn't abruptly come back in so what we'll do is we'll say transition to our mute background music snapshot array the weight we're going to give it is a new float array and it's going to simply contain one float of size uh, one float of 1.0 f so what we're saying here is the one snapshot that's in here should be at its full weight, and then we're going to give it that transition time. Then we will, so now what we want to do though is we need some way to wait for transition to finish. And there's a couple ways you could do this. You could um, invoke a new method that then, um, and that, that just waits for a delay to invoke itself and then does the rest of the uh, code. However, a, probably a better way to do this, or at least my personal preference of way to do this, is to use a coroutine. And so we do need to do a little bit more prep work here because unfortunately we can't just change this to be a coroutine because if we did so, we can no longer call it from here. You can't call a, specifically a coroutine from an outside class. So we have to create a sort of middleman class in addition here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change this to, to name to run music change, and it's going to be now an I enumerator, and it doesn't need to be public. But now I'm going to create a public void change music class again, or uh, function again up here. And all that this is going to do is to say um, start coroutine, run change music, and pass in that. So it's really, like I say, just a middleman to pass this through and actually get that coroutine started for us. Now we do need to say down here, um, we cannot um, simply return nothing in an I enumerator. So we have to say uh, yield return break, or yield break rather, which or actually, we do this in a different way. We can say um, yield break, and then we can say down here, here we're going to need to break this into an else statement. Um, and so we'll put that in there. We may not actually need this, but Unity tends to like that you have, you're yielding something, so I'm going to put it this way and then put the rest of it here. Now where we want this to wait, we're going to use what's called a yield return new wait for seconds, and we tell it how many seconds we want it to wait. In this case, it's again going to be the transition time. So we can say yield return new wait for seconds, and you need that new um, in there. You can't just say yield return wait for seconds. You're actually kind of creating this instance of a wait for seconds, and it's going to be for the transition time. So now what we're doing is we're fading this down to muted, waiting while it does that for the exact same amount of time, and so we know that that will be uh, the background music is muted. Then we'll change the um, track, and then we can actually use this again here and bring this back up at this point uh, by setting this to the full audio. So over the course of one second, it's gonna fade out, change the track, and then fade back in to, for us. So with that there, we can now jump back into the Unity Inspector, and here we again need to do a little bit more um, setup because we need to now create these two arrays. So one is just the full audio array, and we can hit Oh, make that a size of one. And we simply want to make sure that, that our audio mixer, that's the one we want for our full audio. And then for mute BGM, same thing, we'll make that a size of one. And we'll give it the mute BGM. So now we can hit play. Our music starts playing. And when we hit start game, we'll hear the music fade out and then the new music fade back in. Actually, we won't because we did not do one thing here. Let me hit play again and see if this is not doing what I think it's doing. Yes. So the problem we have is that there is one last thing we need to do, and that's because of our custom settings that we have. When you create custom settings um, and you expose parameters and you set those in Unity, it actually um, kind of separates them out, kind of exiles them from the control of the snapshots. And so once we start our game and we set this to the player's um, 
preset volumes, we can no longer control it with snapshots. And so we need to kind of give control back to Unity in order to do that. And we can do that pretty easily. All we have to do is say, um, change our, when we go to change our music, we can simply say it right here. In fact, we can say uh, mixer dot clear float. And we can copy that. And likewise, we can do the same thing for the S of X volume. And so all that's doing for us is that's simply saying, hey, don't look at the um, don't look at the custom settings anymore. Uh, just go back to being controlled by snapshots. So now what we can do is we can hit play. And now when we go to switch here, you'll see that these will hit start game. They drop down and then they come back up and we get that much smoother transition. However, there is one last little bug here which is that our audio, you'll notice, gets re reset back to zero, zero, zero. It doesn't, because we cleared those exposed parameters, once we hit start and then go back, these are no longer using the player control settings. And we do want to maintain those. However, that's going to require a little bit more work. It's going to be a pretty quick fix, but I'm going to save that for next week because this video is getting a little bit long. So in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.